This video is a quick review of Fourier series. In this lecture, we'd like to go over the following objectives. First, I'd like to introduce you to the different forms of Fourier series. We have the trigonometric Fourier series, the compact form of the trigonometric Fourier series, then we have the exponential Fourier series. These are three different forms. And then we go on to some examples. Once we are done with the examples, we come to an important concept, which is the concept of the spectrum. We look at the single-sided and the double-sided spectrum. Then, what is the trigonometric Fourier series and why it's important? Uh, it gives you a chance to represent the signal in different form, whether trigonometric, made of cosine and sine. So we're saying any periodic function can be represented. I mean, basically, uh, I mean, to make things simple, we say any periodic signal can be represented in, in the form of cosine and sine. So if you give me a function or a signal with period t naught, I can represent that signal with cosines and sines. We call this trigonometric Fourier series. It looks mathematically like this. The periodic function is made of is approximated by a constant plus sum of cosines and sines. The number of terms goes to infinity. We have infinite terms to be exact. And those cosines are scaled by specific amplitude to give you the proper shape. Omega naught, the angular frequency of these cosines and sines are related to your uh, signal. So if the signal has a frequency or time period of t naught, the frequency in hertz will be 1 over that, and the angular frequency will be 2 by times f naught. There are nice websites, if you like, by John Hopkins to discuss the issue of Fourier series. All right, here is our two examples to make you believe. Somebody would like to represent Fourier, Fourier series uh, or uh, trigonometric Fourier series of a sort of signal. What you see here is that one term approximation. That's to say only one trigonometric function. This is the sum of two terms. Then we have three terms, four terms, five. You can see as we increase the number of terms, we can get close to what we want to represent. Even if you want to represent, for example, squared signal, a train of squared signal. One term approximation. This is the first approximation. Then we have two cosines. We're getting close with only just two cosines. Three terms, four, five, and twelve. And you can guess as we increase the number of terms, things will become closer to what we want to represent. All right, so we call this the trigonometric Fourier series. And we know that its frequency is related to your signal. So what is missing here? If you want to represent your signal as a Fourier series, you need to find the constant A0 and these multipliers. I'm giving them here colors to distinguish. So we have the green A0. It's the average value. It's defined to be the area under the curve divided by the cover time. So you integrate, for example, from a, a dummy variable T1 to T1 plus capital T0. This is covering one period. If you divide by that time, you get your average value. This is the first approximation. Then we can find a n and b as a function of n. So we are not going into the proof. This is just a review. So here is how to find a n and b n. Multiply your signal by cosine. Okay. And if you want to find b n, you multiply by sine. I am using a red color to show you that here is a factor of two. This comes from the derivation. So this is a usually forgotten term. So 2, 2 here, and the difference between an and b is in the sine and the cosine. Now, we can also have a compact version of the trigonometric Fourier series. For example, uh, we can say that g of t can be represented as c naught, the average value, and then we have a cosine, but this cosine has got magnitude and phase shift. Okay, if you go back to the math, you'll find that sum of cosine and sine with different scaling factors but with the same frequency, can be written into one compact cosine term. But be careful here, we have an additional phase. If you give me an and bn, I can find cn and theta n using the following relations. All right, so cn 
and B and are related to C and are related to N and B and using the following relations. Theta is the tan inverse of the following term. Sometimes they take the minus sign here and it becomes positive here. If you keep this positive, then you have to take minus B and over A. For the average value, it remains the same. Now, if your signal is periodic, you can use this kind of, of representation. If it's not periodic, then you can consider only specific time because the series itself will repeat itself. We'll, we'll see this in the example that comes later on. Now, this compact form, the only variables as you can see here is C0, Cn, and theta. N. We, can, we can have a graphical representation of that, which we call the spectrum. So if you take the sketch of Cn as function of frequency, it becomes the spectrum, the amplitude spectrum. And we call it single-sided because it's only positive. If you take theta n versus frequency, then we call it the phase spectrum. I'll show you some example later on. And theta if plotted across frequency, whether omega or if or even n, n will be just the integer multiplier. Then we call it the phase spectrum. All right. We can also have a third form of Fourier series, which we call the exponential Fourier series. This is coming from the Euler identity. This is a German scientist, so he relates the exponential, exponential, uh, the complex exponential term, can be written as sum of cosine and sine. Note that this is also complex. Okay, using this identity, if you give me a trigonometric function, you can also write it in terms of a complex exponential. So the cosine itself can be written as sum of two exponentials. And notice the factor of half here. We can also write the sine in a similar way, but we'll have a minus sign and we have a j here. Using this relation, I can I can replace the cosine with, with its equivalent complex exponential. So we come up with what we call the exponential or complex exponential Fourier series. Now, we're just using a different variable. We're calling it dn. Notice here that in the complex exponential, the summation starts from minus infinity. Why? Because we have positive and negative terms. So, and this is why we introduce a concept of negative frequency. We know that in real life, there is no negative frequency, I mean, physical sense, but that makes the, the math compact. Now, how do you find dn? You can find dn directly by using the following notation, the following relation. Again, we're just showing the final result without proof. The only missing term here, if somebody give you a function and say find its complex exponential, you just need to find dn. And that makes the complex exponential for your series an advantage. Because you don't have to find the phase and the constant, you just, you just find one common term, which is dn. Now, notice here that in finding dn, the complex that we multiply with has a minus sign. So there is a difference between these two equations. Just to note. Now, not every function can be mathematically solved because of this integration. So there are some uh, existence conditions for this to hold. The area under the curve or this function should have a limited area. All right, if we move next, we, we can uh, represent the spectrum into double-sided versus single-sided. So what's the difference here? We explained the, the double-sided spectrum, which is a sketch of the C end and theta ends. Now, if you, want, if you decide to sketch dn, dn is in general is complex. If you can, can sketch its magnitude and its phase as function of frequency. But now, because dn can be, we have n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, we call it the double-sided spectrum. Uh, just to recall the relations, if you if somebody give me the single sided and you want to find the double sided, here how, how C n and D and D zeros are related. Okay, when it comes to the to the angle, the angle of D n uh, and theta n, they are simply related. It's just uh, here we have even symmetry and here we have odd symmetry. I'll show you this on, on the sketch. Okay, when we have even magnitude an odd phase, we can call this complex conjugate symmetry. 
In this course, we are going to focus on double-sided spectrum and the complex exponential. And from now, uh, every now and then, we'll use the, the trigonometric representation. So here is an example. The example says, for the following signal, find the Fourier series. Recall that the signal is not periodic. So we need to find, uh, we are interested only from 0 to pi. So what we represent is from 0 to pi, automatically in the Fourier series, things will repeat itself. So we are told in the question that this is the range of interest from 0 to pi. So now we can find the Fourier series of the following periodic signal. Oh, we start by writing, uh, finding the fundamental thing is, what is the period of the signal? It's from 0 to pi, then it starts repeating itself. So t naught is pi, from which we can find the angular frequency, omega naught, which is 2 pi over t naught, and it becomes 2 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, sorry, for pi, which is 2. This equation represents the Fourier series, the complex Fourier series, and what is missing is now to use the equation for dn. These two equations are required. Now, if you match the colors, the only missing thing here is to execute the integration. We already found omega naught. We know t naught. And we can integrate over the limits. The function is e to the power minus t over 2 from 0 to pi. So substitution give you the following relation. Notes that this function is different than this function. So if you use e to the power minus t over 2, you need to use the limit from 0 to pi. We cannot use from pi to 2 pi unless we represent the following different curve. Now, how do we execute this integration? Multiplication of exponential, we can add the exponents. And now, it's not too difficult to integrate the exponent. Remember that the variable is t, so everything here is just a constant. Okay, so when executing the integration, we divide by the exponential, and we got the following exponent. We need to substitute the terms, so we substitute it by minus 0. 0, 0 just give you 1. So what if you execute the integration, you'll get finally the following expression. To go from here to here, you have to be to, to have to be a little bit careful. Okay. Now, once we get the n, we can go back to the original equation. We substitute. So all these steps are to find the n. But once we find the n, we are not done. We have to substitute into the general form of the Fourier series. So we got the following answer. Okay. You just it give you an answer as function of n. You can find d0, d1, d-1, or what have you. Just to recall, to go from here to here, uh, note that when we substitute by, we need to use Euler identity to go back into complex, uh, into trigonometric form, because e to the j multiples of 2 by, remember that cosine and sine multiple of 2 bys can be easily calculated. So this will make the term cancel and things will become simple. So once again, you need to go from complex to trigonometric to understand what's going on. This is a simple scenario because we have multiples. This term is simple because when, once we substitute by, it becomes multiples of 2 by. Okay, so keep this in your mind. We're going to move into sketching the spectrum of the following example. So based on that expression, we can find the specific dns. So d0 is found by substituting n equal to 0. d1 is found by substituting n equal to 1. We have to know how to go from uh, this expression, uh, using complex conversion of course, into magnitude and phase. So the magnitude is 0.122 while the angle is this. We also can find d, d for n equal to minus 1 by substituting n equal to minus 1 here. But notes here that even without doing the calculation, those are complex conjugates. So the magnitude remains the same, while the angle is just the negative of that. Similarly for d2 and d minus 2. I am using different color here to show you that the magnitude is the same and the angle is just uh, the complex conjugate. If we take all these values, if you take all these values and uh, sketch them here, you'll find out that... Uh, the magnitude is even while the phase is odd symmetric. For the single sided spectrum, we need to find CNs uh, in the compact form because the single sided is function of CN and theta n. 
we can we can use the following relations the first value is just the same as d0 while all the remaining values cn will be double dn is half of cn and cn is double of dn so if somebody give me the sing double sided and he asks me for the single sided i will take the value here as is and all remaining amplitudes will be scaled by a factor of 2 so 0.122 it becomes 0.244 it's a very common mistake to scale d0 also so be careful this remains the same everything else uh, is to be scaled by 2 if you go from here to here if you go from here to here you have to scale by half for the phase for the phase you can see that from the double sided to the single sided all you need is to erase this portion and you get the single sided spectrum okay here is a practice problem will not go uh, in its details but it just says that you can still find the single sided representation or the compact trigonometric Fourier series from scratch you don't have to go into double side so for I mean for the same example we have the same period same frequency here is the trigonometric uh, Fourier series you can find a0 a n b n and then from a n and b n we can find uh, c end as we're going to see next the problem with going this way is that we have complex and cosine so easy, either use integration by part or use tables to find the integration so if somebody provide me with the following table or a formula for integration it should be no problem I just follow the same formula I can get a n and b n it looks a bit uh, uh, lengthier and then from here we can combine a n and b n to get c n we know the relation between them and we get the compact form which we had earlier it will take some time you can freeze the video if you like and and reproduce the result yourself uh, the final thing we'd like to do here is uh, to recall the Parseval's theorem so what does it say it says you can find uh, the energy or power from the spectrum or from the compact form instead of going back to the signal you notice here the compact form is made of constant and a series of cosines the power here is c0 squared while the power here is cn squared over 2 so if you sum them up all you get the power uh, if somebody give me the complex format I can take the constant outside uh, this is just to make things uh, visible so I'm excluding n0 from here because it's already explicit here what's the power of a constant it's d0 squared what's the power of the phasor we can prove that the power of the phasor is the amplitude squared for the cosine it's amplitude squared 2 while for the phasor it's just I mean the complex exponential it's just if it's dn it becomes dn squared so the power of this term is d0 squared the power of this term is dn squared now because we're going from minus infinity to plus infinity we can scale by 2 okay and we just change the change uh, the summation limit because it's just the same now we also can combine these two terms together and with the two instead of saying 2 from 1 to infinity and d0 we can say it's sum from minus infinity to plus infinity so it's dn squared so if somebody give me the double sided spectrum all I need to do is square and sum for example it says here find the power of the signal in the previous example if you have the spectrum of the previous example so you can say this is squared plus that squared plus that squared plus that squared of course until you get small terms you get a very good approximation of the power in summary Parseval theorem allows you to find the energy of power from the spectrum rather than the need for the explicit expression in time and do uh, integration and what have you with that we conclude the review of full series uh, thank you for being good listeners.